Good evening on a Saturday night, YouTube friends. This is Lee, the Cold War Prepper. Um, just want to remind you, the reason we do this is not to instill fear. Uh, we want to live in faith and not fear. Uh, I don't want to hype anything up. I don't like, uh, I don't like conspiracy theories. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm not doing a whole bunch. I'm not going to do any lives. I get distracted by all these crazy conspiracy theories on other people's live channels. And I get wrapped up in that instead of focusing on what the speaker's talking about. And, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff out there. I mean, whoa, just unbelievable. And people make all kinds of claims on who they are and what they know about it. And I find a lot of those hard to believe. But anyhow, um, we do know a couple things. We do know that, that we're in the middle of or at the beginning of the a grand solar minimum. And there's going to be reduced uh, crop productivity. We also know that the war is having its effect on uh, wheat production in Europe. We know that it's going to affect sunflower seeds, uh, sunflower production, and sunflower oil. I believe that, that, let me see, it's 46, 23, 69. 69 percent of the total world supply of sunflowers comes out of uh, Russia and Ukraine. So that's been disrupted. So um, vegetable oil, sunflower oil, that's going to be a critical shortage here in the near future. Um, olive oil, I don't think it's going to be affected, but... It, you know, that can't handle everything we need. So we've got shortages in wheat. We've got shortages in corn. We've got shortages in sunflowers. Uh, it looks like oats are going to have a, a smaller than usual crop. Coffee beans, uh, because of the drought down in South America, are going to be in critical shortage here in the near future as well. So what can we do uh, having this knowledge that there's going to be shortages in wheat, corn, oats, sunflowers, coffee, what are we going to do to incorporate that into our plans so that we can go ahead and get that stuff and then be prepared for uh, future shortages? Remember that we also have inflation happening at the same time that we have uh, food shortages. So there's going to be less available. And remember, basic economics 101, uh, supply and demand. So when something is in short supply, cost goes up. Well, if we have inflation and there's short supply and cost goes up, it's going to go up even higher because the value of the dollar that you're spending has less value. So you have to spend more dollars to get the same value. And uh, so that's just a fact of life. It's, things are going to get more expensive. They're going to be less readily available. So what would I recommend you do? Uh, number one, uh, if you can, get some coconut oil. Um, I, I try to pick one up every time I go to the store now. Uh, I say they have a shelf life of five years. I had a comment from a person that said that he's had experience with it lasting 10. Um, I, I would say the same thing to you. If you have valuable comments like that, additional experience or whatever, put that in the comments below uh, because that's going to add value just like this guy did. Um, I, I will tell you five years. He's going to tell you 10 years. Uh, go with what you think is best for you. But uh, I would also stock up on some ghee, which is clarified butter. That can be used as a replacement for oil if you need to fry things. Now, since there's going to be a shortage of oil, that also means that some of the things we get that are pre-fried are going to be in short supply in the near future. Think chips, popcorn, things like that that you get bagged and uh, pre-made and, and ready for you. Um, I, would, I would start looking at stocking up on some breakfast cereals, cream of wheat, grits, um, oatmeal. Then I would also take a look at the standard cold cereals, but I would get them without sugar. Uh, some of the ones you might think of first are those without sugar it might be Cheerios, Corn Flakes, Rice Krispies. I believe Raisin Bran doesn't have any sugar in it, but you want to get cereals, cold cereals, don't have any sweeteners or any sugars or anything else because that's what will go bad in it before anything else. And then repackage those so that you can uh, basically uh, deprive them of oxygen with an oxygen absorber and keep them a little bit longer. Uh, <clears throat> when you do that, you're also going to need some milk for the future. So get some powdered milk uh, or freeze-dried milk. The, uh, uh, the one I recommend that you can get at most grocery stores in Walmart is uh, Nestle's uh, Nido Fortificado. It has a pretty good taste. Uh, but at this, and that's going to be in the Hispanic uh, uh, foods area. But you can also get the, the Walmart version or your grocery store version. Everybody has their own version of uh, um, freeze-dried or powdered milk. You get some of that so you can have your, your breakfast if you want and, and also make some things. Let's talk about wheat now and, and shortages of wheat. Stock up on flour. 
uh, make sure you buy something so that you can repackage your flour into an airtight container and then deprive it of oxygen because flour will go bad over time. Um, along with flour, you also want yeast uh, in some form so that you can make bread in the future if that's what you need. Uh, there are three ways you can do that. Number one, you can get the regular um, yeast that comes in a jar or in a small package or whatever. I'm going to recommend you put that in your freezer to keep it fresh as long as possible. Uh, second alternative is uh, baking powder. Uh, and then the third alternative is to go on YouTube, or I'm sorry, go on uh, 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 DuckDuckGo and look up sourdough starter. Start you some sourdough starter now. That's what they did in the Old West in the 1800s, um, and San Francisco became famous for it. But you can use sourdough in, in lieu of uh, the standard canned yeast to make your bread. So, And um, that's what they did for a long time. There's a company called Krusty's, and I ordered a case, 24 boxes of sourdough bread, just to add water uh, from them. And they've got Italian herb. They've got several different bread mixes. Stock up on bread mixes uh, and see if you can't get those as well. Um, look at pasta. Pasta is wheat-based, so get as much pasta as you can. And then start thinking of all the different pasta recipes that you can use. Uh, we've probably got 14, 16 jars of pasta, of uh, spaghetti sauce in our pantry. Uh, I also, from Thrive Life, get their uh, tomato sauce, which can be used as a base to make my own uh, spaghetti sauce once those jars are gone. You can also use crushed tomatoes or canned tomatoes, tomato paste, uh, a lot of different things you can use. There are so many different pasta recipes out there, fantastic pasta recipes. Uh, aglio e olio, which is basically oil and garlic. You've got uh, uh, puttanesca, which is basically sardines and mushrooms. You can just do mushrooms. You can do uh, tuna, salmon, clams, uh, oh gosh, shrimp. Uh, all these different canned goods that you can use to mix with pasta to make it fantastic. You can also do, uh, I have Hoosier Farms uh, Heavy Cream. And uh, you can use that to make an Alfredo sauce. You can also get heavy cream from Thrive Life. So um, you can make any kind of Alfredo sauce with those. So, you know, so many recipes. If you have a good recipe uh, that you're going to make out of stock, out of, out of canned goods, do me a favor. Link it below and, and share that with other people. Um, <clears throat> same thing, ramen noodles are, are pasta-based. I'm, I'm sorry, wheat-based. Lots of great recipes for ramen noodles. Egg noodles. Get as much egg noodles as you can. Swanson has a fantastic uh, product uh, called Chicken a la King. It's in a can, and that goes very well with egg noodles, as does tuna uh, for a tuna casserole. You can also get the small cans of roast beef, and that goes extremely well over egg noodles. So there's a lot of ways you can use the egg noodles to make those into a full meal. Um, the Germans use egg noodles, Spätzle, and uh, they mix it with uh, a fantastic mushroom sauce, and that's called Jäger, uh, Jäger sauce, and, or Hunter's sauce. And oh, it's, it's just one of my favorite things to eat. Uh, my wife fixes that for me uh, every year for my birthday uh, in, in August. So maybe I'll use that as a, uh, uh, a picture of that as the uh, title for the, the clip for this, uh, this video. Um, think of getting some cake mixes. Uh, I found one today. I, I, I wanted to pick up just white cake or yellow cake, a couple cans of pineapples, and you know some things so I could do some uh, pineapple upside down cakes in my uh, Dutch oven. And I found this. Look at that. This is a complete pineapple upside down cake kit. Uh, that'll probably stay good for about six months to a year. You can probably freeze it. Uh, but I was just astonished that here I, I'm out there looking for components to make pineapple upside down cake in case of an emergency. And here's a complete kit already made. So, uh, you know, look at uh, uh, cake mixes, cookie mixes, uh, all those different things that are wheat based that you're going to add to your, port uh, to your portfolio of foods now. Um, look at bread mixes. One of my favorites is a company called Krusty's. They used to have a sourdough mix uh, that we just love, and I can't find it anymore, so I had to order it online and ordered a case of their sourdough mix. They also have an Italian flatbread. They have several different breads. Just add water, uh, let it rise, and then cook it. It's fantastic. 
consider getting extra crackers. And remember, crackers are another form of bread uh, that was used by the Navy quite quite a while, uh, along with salt pork. That was their mainstay of, of food. So a little bit of crackers with peanut butter and jelly is, is pretty good. Uh, we found some peach uh, preserves at uh, Costco yesterday. Now it's 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 uh, Fredericksburg peaches and it's just it's jarred just real close to us here. So I don't know if it's a national thing or it's just here in Central Texas, but uh, we got a couple jars of peach uh, preserves uh, spread uh, for our crackers. So that's that's going to look pretty good. Um, and like I said, also get some yeast and stick the yeast in your freezer, and that'll preserve it a little bit longer. Uh, Look up sourdough starter on DuckDuckGo. Get yourself started with some sourdough starter. It takes about a good week to get a good, good healthy uh, dose of sourdough starter ready so you can start making bread with it. Okay, so that's all my ideas for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll come back and uh, uh, we'll talk about things that uh, you need to think about from the Great Depression. And then hopefully my Thrive Life order will come in on Monday. Uh, I put that order in. It's a third of every month that it goes in. And it didn't ship until the 6th. So hopefully it'll be here Monday and then we can do, I can get rid of all this stuff here on the table and show you my haul for this last week. We're all in this together. We want to come out of the other side together. So all of your comments are valuable. All of your additional recipes, ideas, and uh, things that you can pass on to other people to help us make it through this is fantastic. We appreciate it. Have a great day.